everyone. Welcome to UEN PDTV episode six. We're talking about Chromebooks today, and I'm most excited about this episode because I get to introduce our newest team member. This is Shannon Ryrie. Hello. Shannon, tell us a little bit about your background as an educator. What did you do before you joined us here at UEN? Okay, well, I taught fifth grade for a handful of years in Wasatch District and then also in Granite. And then I worked as a technology specialist in Granite School District. And then just this past summer, I started at UEN. Cool. So one of the tools that you've taught a lot uh, as a Granite mm -hmm. at Tech were Chromebooks. Right. Correct. So um, tell us a little bit about Chromebooks, why you like them so much. Um, they are really practical for classroom use. They're easy to use. They're easy for teachers to use. They're easy for students to use. They start up quickly long battery life. There's just a lot of, they're cloud-based, so you're not having to worry about things being saved and kids getting back to the same device. They can hop on any device and get to all their work. So they're just really easy, easy for all the students to use. Cool. One thing I've heard about Chromebooks is that compared to other computers, they're really cheap. So what makes them so cheap? Right. So not cheap. They're definitely, they're definitely inexpensive. They're, uh, they're quite a bit less than especially like a MacBook. Uh, but they're really durable. Um, they last a long time. You know, I saw two years worth of third graders using Chromebooks, and I think I saw one damaged screen the entire time. So they really are very durable and really do the job well for any age of student. And you said they're cloud-based. What exactly does that mean? So that means that when you are working on any document, you're, you're working on the internet. So as long as you're signed into your Google account, then that means that your um, your work is getting saved to that account. So then if you sign into that same Google account on any other device, not just a Chromebook, but a PC or a Mac, then you'd be able to get back to your work. So everybody using the Chromebook has to have a Google account. Correct, like, yes. And granted, you guys are Google Apps for Educator set up, right? Yeah. So everybody signs in with that account, and then does it matter what computer they're using? It does not matter. It does not matter. As long as you sign in as yourself, you'll have access to to all of your work that you've saved to your Google Drive. Oh, that sounds great. So not only is your stuff saved there, but all of your like username, your password, your settings, your bookmarks, right. any of those things Everything. That are all saved in the yes. cloud. Mm -hmm. Can a kid go home, log into Chrome with their Granite School District or their mm -hmm. Google Apps for Educator account and see everything that they saw in school? Yes. Yep. Wow. Yeah, so really, really practical for working on something at school and then being able to turn around and, and work on the same thing at home for homework. So, Shannon, one of my pet peeves as a classroom teacher was that whenever I brought laptops into the room, it would take forever for the kids to turn them on, right. get them booted up and running mm -hmm. and stuff. How does a Chromebook compare? So a Chromebook on average from off to ready to type, ready to go is about five to seven seconds. Seconds? Seconds. Seconds. Yeah. yeah, so let me show you real this quick. This one's off? This one's totally off. Completely powered off? <laughs> Completely. You turn it on and I'll type it, okay? okay. Ready? And go. One, one thousand, two, you said five to seven? It's on. Yeah, it's on. And now, ready to go. Yeah. So, yeah, so it's really fast, and this has been true for every device of every brand of Chromebook I've ever used. There hasn't been one that's been faster than another. Huh. And when a kid's done using it, what do they have to do to log off or anything? Um, they can click just, they can just sign off in the bottom corner really easy, or if it's a device they're going to be coming back to later, just close it. And when they open it back up again, it'll start right back up. Just close the just lid? Just close the lid. Just like that? Yep. Close it, and then when they come back to it, they open it back up again, and it's ready to go. I got a new Chromebook. <laughs> okay. um, so Shannon, you mentioned that uh, Chromebooks are different from MacBooks or Windows machines. Can you show us exactly how they're different? Sure. So first off, visually, there are some differences you can see, even just that the keys on a keyboard of a Chromebook are lowercase versus on different keyboards, they're going to be capital. Um, we also, on a typical keyboard, you have some function keys along the top. Um, and if you can see on this Chromebook, we don't have any of those function keys. All of the keys on the top row of the Chromebook are used uh, to manipulate your browser and to, uh, to help you work through the windows so, you have up. So Shannon's going to show us now on the screen just some of the uh, nuances of a Chromebook. Things like, um, is there a hard drive on there? You said no moving parts, right? Correct. So, okay. there, so there is no hard drive. 
Um, but if you want to access, if you want to access anything on your Chromebook, you are going to want to go down here to this search key. Now there's also the same key on your keyboard. When I go ahead and click on that, that's my launcher. And it brings up this Google box with the Omnibox that's it's a Google search bar. It can also be a calculator. You can ask it questions and it gives you a few different websites or apps that you can get to pretty quickly right here. If you want to look at all of them, for instance, if you want to get to your drive, your Google drive, where all your documents you've created and your slides are, you would click on your drive to get there. These bars down here on the bottom indicate how many pages you have. So in this case, we have two pages and I can just click on the second one to see all of the the different apps that I or websites that I have bookmarked here. One thing that if you look at the keyboard, there is not a caps lock button. Yeah, so, so if there's no caps lock, how do you turn it on? Turn on my caps lock. I need to hold down the alt key and then also the search button on my keyboard. I get this little message over here that says caps lock is on. And I also get this up arrow. And that's an indicator to me that my caps lock is on. So anything that I type is going to be in all caps. If I want to turn it off, then again, I'm just going to hold down the Alt key and then the search button and let go. And now on my screen, that arrow has disappeared. Now there are a ton of shortcuts um, that you can use. And sometimes it's really hard to remember all of them. And there's a nice key to get you to all of them. If on my keyboard, if I press Control, Alt, and the question mark, I get this keyboard that gives me some instructions. If I hold down the Control key, like I'm going to do right now, then it lets me know. If I hold down Control with um, the Z key, then it's going to undo my last action. If I hold down the Alt key, for instance, it shows me when I hold down Alt, if I click on the, the search key, it'll turn on caps lock, turn it on and off. Um, you can also do that for shift and then search as well. And you can see that those function keys that are not at the top of the keyboard anymore, if you hold down the search key, you still have access to those different function keys. So they're there. A lot of these same features are there. You just have to figure out where they are. So again, that control alt question mark, bringing up this main key is really helpful. And then to get out of it, you can just press escape. Too. What about the touchpad? How does that work? So the touchpad, the trackpad is basically you just use your pointer finger to move your mouse around the screen. Mm -hmm. Where it comes in differently would be um, if you want to scroll up or down, you can, using two fingers, you can click to hold down your mouse and then use your other finger to scroll. Or what's quicker and what I like to do is just use two fingers to touch the trackpad at the same time. And as you scroll up and down, it moves the screen up and down. Um, any other secrets we need to know about the trackpad? Yeah, um, if you want to right click, you just take those two same scrolling fingers and just tap at the same time on the screen and your normal right click menu will come up. So again, to right click, two fingers, tap at the same time and it comes up. Cool. And if you don't like using the trackpad, you can just take a USB mouse and plug it in and it will function the same way. Okay, so one thing, if you want to save an image, we talked about the fact that there is not a hard drive, but there still is a limited amount of space where you can save things to in your download. If I wanted to save this UEN image, I would take my two fingers and tap on my trackpad to bring up that right click menu. I would go down to save image as, and when it brings up this new box, it will let me just save it to my drive or I can save it to downloads, but this file space is very limited. So typically you would just want to save it to your drive, but you could save it to downloads and you would just click save. So when you save pictures from the web onto the actual Chromebook, then you need to be on that Chromebook the next time you log in in order to access it, right? Yeah, absolutely. That's a good point. If you want to be able to access the images that you save 
on any device. If you know you're going to be doing homework and you need to get to it at home, make sure you save it to your drive. If right. you save it to downloads, it's local to this device. Now, to get to that, you would want to go to your, your search button, go to all apps, and then if you go to your files, that's where you can go ahead and find anything that you have saved to your downloads or saved locally on your device. So then I would be able to find the image that I saved. And this Chromebook that you gave me, thank you, has a couple ports on this. I saw there were two USB ports and a place to put in an SD card, right? So if you wanted to upload from a right. camera. So, yeah, some models do have the SD card. And a headphone jack. Yep, which comes in real handy when you've got students doing different things. You got a power cord and a place to plug in HDMI, so you could connect this to a projector. Absolutely, absolutely. So you could just have students projecting what's on there on all of their individual Chromebooks to share things with the class. Fantastic. Shannon, thank you so much for being here to share all your expertise on Chromebooks. You bet. That was fantastic. I think we're going to see a lot of Chromebook usage around Utah with their inexpensive uh, capabilities. Great. So let me ask you this. I'm a teacher. I'm in the classroom. I just got Chromebooks. I want to learn more. Does UEN have anything else to offer about Chromebooks? UEN does offer some courses about Chromebooks, and I'll show you how you get to that. So you would go to UEN.org, to our homepage here. If you just hover your mouse over the Professional Development tab, and the menu that comes up, right over here, it says Register for a Course. Oh, cool. This is our new Go Sign Me Up uh, system where you can register for classes. And you can also register here for USOE, or now it's called USBE courses. But there's our tech courses and... What can we do with the search bar? So if you wanted to look specifically for a topic, in this case, if you wanted to find out what we have on Chromebooks, you could search Chromebooks. And you would see we do have a class that's coming up. It's a two-day in-person class here at the lab on no November 9th and 10th. And those are all-day classes. All right. So that'll give uh, people who sign up for this can get a whole USOE credit or yes, SUU credit. Correct. Um, the classes are free mm -hmm. or they can do it for a certificate, right? Mm -hmm. And who's the teacher of this class? Um, I don't know. I've never heard of her before. Never heard of her? I think she's a newbie. The new person. Oh, it's Shannon mm -hmm. Ryrie. Oh, no. <laughs> Our Chromebook expert. So Shannon, at the end of every episode, Danny uh, does mm -hmm. a dance and Danny's not in this episode. I so, wish Danny was here. Because... You're not going to I don't want to take Danny's thing. I don't want to be the new person coming in trying to steal, steal. other people's stuff. So. All right. We'll just call it a show. And yeah. be sure that you guys all subscribe to our YouTube channel, which we're going right to hold here. up right here for mm -hmm. you. Yep. And this is where we'll post all of our UEN PD TV episodes as well as our Canvas tutorials and anything else related to UEN professional development and our courses. You can also see these episodes on um, eMedia and the yep. UEN.org website. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to roll the credits now. Help me roll okay. the credits. We're rolling them. And we'll call it a show, and there's no dancing. None at all. <laughs> just a little bit of dancing. Just a little. I'm stealing Danny's thing. <laughs> I'm stealing Danny's thing. Let's hope it was recording that time. Bye. It was. Fantastic. That is money. <laughs>